Failure. Failure. That was the first word to enter Ted's mind when he woke up. Failure. It was also his last thought before falling asleep. Failure. It also ran through his head as he stared at his wrinkled, careworn features in his bathroom mirror. Failure. Sometimes he thought, perhaps I should just get it over with and cut my throat. Why wait? But Ted owned an electric shaver. Failure. I wouldn't be able to do away with myself if I tried, he thought. Failure. Ted lived alone. He was a widower, and they had never had kids. He had left his job of 30 years the previous autumn on the first day it was possible for him to go, and he now found himself adrift or, as he put it, put out to pasture. Ted had lived for his job after his wife had died. It was his life, even though his workplace achievements were exceedingly modest. Actually, all he had achieved in the end was failure. Failure. No one from work missed him, and when he was honest with himself, he realized he didn't miss them either. All he had had with his colleagues was a veneer of friendship. And so Ted was now a totally free man, a totally free man in an indifferent world, alone, bored, and consumed by an overwhelming sense of failure. Oh, oh, he tried to snap out of it, he really did. But it was no use. He didn't know where to begin. Ted had been self-contained for so long, an island, he didn't know how to connect with others. So in the end, he went where the people were and found himself sitting in coffee shops or donut holes, listening to the conversations going on around him, listening to the conversations, and thinking how stupid most of the people sounded. They were just fools. And so Ted passed his winter of discontent. It was in the early spring that Ted decided to go camping. Ted had grown up in nature and had enjoyed the outdoors, and he thought he might find peace. He might find peace there. Not owning any camping equipment, he spent several busy days buying everything he needed and found the activity kept his dismal thoughts at bay. Feeling better than he had in months, Ted headed north, far north. He stopped at a busy resort area and leaving his car, hit the trail into the northern boreal forest. It was still early spring, so he encountered very few people as he hiked further and further into the woods. Ted had determined to go off trail to find a spot where he could be alone and commune with nature and see if it really would be a healing balm for his troubled soul. After several hours of hiking, Ted settled in a small clearing about 100 yards from the nearest path. He pitched his small tent, gathered up some wood, and soon had a blazing fire going. Ted had brought a Mickey of dark rum along, and he nipped at it as he ate his meager supper. Soon, soon the darkness took control, and Ted found himself alone again, staring at the fire. And, and with all the hurry and activity of the past few days finished and gone, he found himself suddenly swept by a crashing wave of desolation and despair. Despair. And his mind was filled with a word that rang in his head over and over again. 
Failure. Failure. Ted swallowed some more of the dark, sweet rum to try to stifle his thoughts, or at least kill the pain. Where had it all gone wrong? Ted had tried so hard not to waste his life, only to waste it. An unhappy marriage, his wife's long, slow, painful death from cancer, his mediocre career. He had meant so well, only for everything to have gone wrong, 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 wrong. Failure. A slow procession of bitter memories crawled through the corridors of Ted's mind. And suddenly, he remembered a science fiction movie he'd watched as a young man, The Incredible Shrinking Man. In the very last scene, when the shrinking man has almost shrunken away to nothingness, he stares out a basement window at the night sky and has an epiphany, saying... To God, there is no zero. I still exist. Do I? Ted said out loud. Do I exist? <laughs> or, or am I less than zero? Less than zero. Hey, that was a song. Ted tried to force a laugh, but it came out a sob. He thought back on all those dumb conversations during his university days. If a tree falls in the forest, does anyone hear it? If Ted dies in the forest, does anyone notice? He croaked as he sat slumped before his rapidly dwindling fire. A drunk and desolate old man. A twig snapped. The sound loud as a rifle shot. Ted looked up with a start. No longer in sorrow but now in fear. Something was out there in the darkness. Something was watching him. Watching him. He could feel it. Actually feel it. And then, and then something stepped into the feeble light cast by the fire. It was at least eight feet in height. Broad. Broad, incredibly broad. And covered with thick grayish fur and Ted realized he was looking at a Sasquatch it was ape-like but it wasn't an ape for the face was human the Sasquatch or whatever it was stood regarding him with a pair of glowing red eyes eyes which may have been reflecting the glare of the fire but eyes that were also intelligent and which radiated a sense of empathy? Empathy and concern? As if it cared about this old man, alone, in the middle of the darkened forest. Ted stared into those deep glowing eyes and, and felt a sense of immediate connection connection and communion and without knowing why he raised his right hand palm outwards in a gesture of greeting the giant also raised its huge right hand palm outwards in a gesture of recognition and then it was gone Ted staggered to his tent and passed out, and in the morning he returned to the city. Ted is still alone, and yet he is not lonely. His days are now spent doing volunteer work, and while he doesn't have any close friends, there are many who hold him in esteem. Ted has never told anyone about his experience but he has no doubt that he saw a Sasquatch, saw and communed with it, and that the occurrence was real. And with that has come an almost supernatural sense of wonder, 
of awe, awe, and a growing belief that perhaps all the things that happened to him, all his many disappointments, may just have happened for a purpose, a purpose beyond his understanding and beyond his understanding of success and of failure. It is winter now, but in the spring, Ted is planning to go camping, for Ted has seen the Sasquatch, and the Sasquatch saw Ted. The moral of the story? In God, there truly is no zero. No one, no one is a failure. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the night floaters, werewolves, and the black-eyed children, even the Sasquatch. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,022 subs in 2022. Till midnight. Cheers! Pictures used in today's video courtesy of Pix here. That's PX here. While the music was the lovely and melancholy disintegrating by the incredibly talented Mayu.